Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I haven't done a makeup tutorial in so long, so I thought I'd do a tutorial on my maternity makeup that is sweat proof and waterproof. This makeup actually turned out so beautiful and it looked amazing in my maternity photos. And yes, I will be sharing those with you guys, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, let's get started with this makeup look. Before doing anything, I like to hydrate my skin with the Tatcha Water Cream. I like this because it keeps my skin looking hydrated without getting oily. I like to let it sit on my skin before I apply any foundation or anything of that sort so it really gets absorbed into my skin. I've had pretty dry skin in this pregnancy so hydrating my skin and prepping my skin prior to any foundation is a must. To prep my eyes, I use the Makeup Forever Full Cover Concealer in number 6. I want this makeup to be long lasting because it's going to be super duper hot today. We will be shooting in Roseville which is really close to Sacramento and we will be shooting outside so I need this makeup to last the entire day. So after blending out that concealer with my fingers, I go in with the Too Faced Gingerbread Extra Spicy Palette in the shade Extra Spicy and using a Makeup Geek Defined Crease Brush. I start the eyeshadow in the outer V of my eye, then I go into the crease and work it in to see where I like the placement of the eyeshadow to be. This is the first color I'm using, so I want to make sure that the placement is great. Once I'm happy with the placement, I go in and diffuse it out. Next, I'm going into the Naked Cherry palette and picking up the color Devilish. It's a plum tone. And I'm using a pointed blender brush to concentrate this in the outer corner and inner corner of my eye to sort of create a halo effect. The motions that I'm using to blend this out is like oval side to side motions. That helps me get that little cat eye effect and it also helps me blend it in that specific point because I don't want it to be blended upwards. I want it to be blended outwards to give that diffused look. And I go back in with that burnt orange from the gingerbread palette and I try to marry the two colors together so it looks a little bit seamless and there isn't a line of demarcation. Using a clean brush, it's a fluffy clean brush, I go into the outermost part of the eyeshadow and I just diffuse that color all the way up to my brow bone so it looks nice and seamless. If it doesn't look good right at that moment, it's totally fine. It's a working progress. I just want to make sure the colors look good and everything looks nicely blended. Now I'm going in with the color Privacy from the Naked Cherry palette and concentrating this in the outer and inner corner using a small slanted eyeliner brush so I can get really close to the base of my eye. That is where I want the most intensity. After depositing the color where I want it, I go in with a blending brush and blend it out using small circular side to side motions to diffuse the color out. Now for the actual halo glow, I go into my Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette and use the color Moon Magic. I pick up the product with my middle finger and place it right in the center base of my eye and work it upwards going a little bit above my crease. This placement is very important because if you don't go a little bit above your crease then you won't get that halo effect. So if you have hooded eyes you might need to go literally right under your eyebrow so everybody's eye shape is different and it will look different on everybody so for me i just go a little bit above my crease and it works perfectly for me after i place the eyeshadow where i want it i use my clean finger and i blend out the sides to marry it into the bolder shades so it looks seamless and then i also go in with a fluffy brush to just marry everything together in the crease to add more pop to the center, I go into the Blissful shade from the same palette and add that on top of Moon Magic using the same technique I described earlier. I wanted to do this because it had a very transparent shade of purple and I thought it would look really good since I used deeper plum shades on the inner and outer corner. So over here, I'm just intensifying that bold plum color and then blending and diffusing it out with the point with the blending brush. For the bottom lash line, I go in with the same three shades, Extra Spicy, Devilish, and Privacy, and layer them and diffuse them out to get a nice smoky effect. I like to really fan out that first color and then keep the darkest tone closest to the base of my lash line. 
I'm applying a Marc Jacobs liquid liner in blacker. I like to start at the inner three fourths of my eye with just a line and do small strokes and outline my lash line. Then I do the tail end of my eyeliner and that helps me see how thick or thin I would like to have that eyeliner. My camera actually stopped recording, but basically I tight lined my eyes with a Charlotte Tilbury rock and coal bedroom black on the top and bottom of my eyes and I set both top and bottom with a slanted eyeliner brush with the color Privacy, which was that deep shade of purplish plum color. Now I'm going back in and just perfecting the eyeshadow, seeing where I need more blending, where I need a darker tone, is it looking seamless, are there any harsh edges? I basically perfect it and then I move on to my brows. I'm using the same Makeup Forever full cover concealer to outline my eyebrows using a flat square brush. I actually don't even know what the name of this brush is because I think it got rubbed off, but any type of defining flat brush will do. And I just outlined the base of my eyebrow and the top of my eyebrows. And I like using a brush instead of a pencil or any of that stuff because you get more definition and more precision. And I also like to blend it out with my fingers instead of a brush because uh, with this concealer, it's a little bit more on the thicker side, so the heat of your hands helps to melt and blend the product into your skin a lot more easily, and you don't get any like harsh lines or anything of that sort. And then I like to fill in my brows using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz. To top off the eye look, I'm going to set under my brow bone with a matte creamy tone from the Gingerbread Palette in the color Vanilla Wafers using a fluffy blending brush. So this is basically going to ensure that the concealer stays put and everything on my eye stays put and does not move because it is gonna be so hot and I will actually have a vlog and I will be posting that as well now that my eyes are done I'm going to clean under my eyes with some makeup wipes after I do this I like to go back in with my skincare products and lather my skin in it again because yes that's how dry my skin is and also skincare products acts as a good base to ensure your makeup looks good longer for foundation, I'm using the Laura Mercier Silk Cream Moisturizing Foundation in Sand Beige, but before applying it, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to apply my Noid Hyaluronic Acid Serum. I'm going to let it absorb into my skin, and if you don't want to wait around for it to absorb and all that, then it's best to get a mini fan from Amazon. It's super inexpensive, and it speeds up your makeup application tremendously. After that is dry and absorbed, I add my Tatcha Water Cream um, Moisturizer, and I love this stuff. It just ensures that there's no flakiness, no dryness, no cracks or anything of that sort. I love that cream. It is amazing. Now I am just going to apply the foundation over my skin. I'm using a Bedellium Tools stippling brush. You can definitely use a beauty blender, but when I do full cover makeup like this, I prefer to use a brush or my hands because I can easily control how much coverage I want in certain parts of my face. Obviously, certain areas of our face needs a little more love than others, and I find it to be a lot easier to do it with a brush or my fingers than with a beauty blender. Using a beauty blender, I feel like I use a lot more product, and it just takes a lot more application, so I just stopped using it. The technique that I'm using to apply the foundation with the brush is basically bouncing the brush off my skin. In areas that I want fuller coverage, I use small gentle bouncing motions and in areas that I don't need a lot of coverage, I use a little more pressure and I use wider motions to help blend the product out so it doesn't layer up or get thick. I'm going to bronze or contour with the Laura Mercier Matte Silk Cream Foundation in the color Pecan. I dip a Real Techniques dome brush into the foundation and place it in areas of my face I want to contour or warm up and I blend away. I like using this foundation because it has a creamy texture, it's light and very easy to blend and you don't get any harsh lines on your face. It looks nice and seamless. I use a, a good amount of pressure while I'm blending it in circular motions so the product blends evenly and it isn't thick. The key to getting a smooth blended contour without it looking harsh is to make sure you blend it out by using a good amount of pressure. Sometimes the texture of the concealers can be thick. That's why I like to use foundation so it's easier to blend. But if that doesn't work, you can always go over those areas you feel stand out at you with your foundation brush and lightly bounce your brush off of it to blend the contour zones. 
So for more definition, I like to go in with my LA Pro Conceal in the color Toast and add it to the areas of my face that I bronzed to add some more dimension. This is photo shoot makeup, so adding different shades of browns help make it easier for my cheeks to pop and also help give more dimension to my face in the pictures. I'm blending the contour zones again, but this time with a slanted Makeup Forever bronzer brush. This is a dual ended brush where you can apply blush on one end and then contour on the other. I love this brush because it blends evenly and it is the perfect size. I blend my nose contour with a small pointed dome brush from Bedellium Tools. I go up and down along the sides of my nose. I try to keep the product right where I placed it. You don't want to widen up your nose so just keep the product where you place it and just blend it out up and down just enough so it looks natural you may need to go over it with your foundation brush to make it look a little more subtle or you can leave it as is depending on your preference after that i go in with a little bit of powder to lightly set it and this is just a rough draft because i know i have to set my face a little later so i'm going to do that after this next step these are my eyes with no lashes or mascara. I'm going to pop on these lashes from Kiss Beauty in the style Pret a Porter. These are drugstore lashes, but they are the highest quality ever. I first put these lashes on my eyes to measure if I like the length of it on my eye and then I cut it accordingly then I glue it on using a duo adhesive but you can use any lash glue you want instead of throwing away that tail end of the lash that I cut I just add it back onto my eyes in the area where I feel like it'll open my eyes more you can place that cut end anywhere in your eye depending on whether you want a more rounded eye or a more cat eye look it just varies on your preference so for this look i wanted my eyes to look round and big so i placed the cut pieces more in the front part of my eye i coat my top and bottom lashes with my favorite drugstore mascara and if i feel like i need to deepen any parts of my eyeshadow colors then i go ahead and do it now like if i need to brighten anything up or darken anything up this is when i do it now I'm going to set my face and do the finishing touches on my face. I'm applying my favorite RCMA powder using my favorite Makeup Forever flat brush in number one. This brush picks up the perfect amount of powder and fits perfectly under my eyes and in the areas of my face that I'll need to set. And I know you're probably wondering like, oh my God, Michelle, that is hella powder on your face. But trust me, I need this makeup to look good and not just right now, but in a few hours because remember right now it's all... Like it's like 8 a.m. and we aren't shooting until 3 to 4 p.m. So this makeup needs to look good until we actually start the photo shoot. And from now and the time of the photo shoot, we'll be driving for two hours. Then I have to get my hair done and then we have to go grab food and feed the kids. And then we'll actually start the shoot. And all of this will be getting done in a heat wave. So your girl needs to stay as dry as a desert. All right, so let's move on to lips. I'm using one of my current favorite lip combos. If you guys like this lip combo, write this down. I'll also link products down below if you guys want. Um, so first I apply the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in Versatile Chestnut. Then I go over it with my favorite Lee Swatier Prune Lip Liner to deepen it up a little bit. And then the lipstick I pop on is from, Levl from Revlon, excuse me, called Candy Addict. I go back in with my Lee Swatier Lip Liner and add definition in areas of my lips that I feel I need more precision. Then with a flat eyebrow brush, I clean the outer edges of my lips for that nice clean look. Moving on to blush, I'm using a Morphe brush blush palette and I'm using a pinky tone. This blush palette is actually super old guys. This was way back when they had their old logo and they were just starting out. But anyways, a little goes a long way as you can see. And I applied the blush on top of the setting powder as you guys see. And I like to do that because once I dust off the setting powder, I just marry the two colors together and the blush looks very seamless and blended. I also set my lipstick with the RCMA powder. This is just because this makeup is a photo shoot makeup and I want everything to literally stay put since it's going to be so hot. Even though I used a matte Modifying lipstick I still want to set my lips so the color doesn't fade away and everything lasts so I set everything like crazy 
For highlight, I'm using the Pixie by Petra Sugar Blossom Palette. This is my fave. I use the color Rosewood and I use it all the time. I pick up the color with my middle finger or ring finger and apply it in a diagonal circular motion following the curve of my cheekbones and I also apply it on the apples of my cheeks. This gives me that dewy natural look without looking cakey. After that, I dust the ColourPop Candy Floss Highlight for that added shimmery glittery vibe because I want to be glowing in this shoot, guys. I I also apply the highlight down the bridge of my nose and on the tip as well as my lips and by the way I did not set my makeup with a setting spray here because I was literally running so late and I wanted to get a shot of my makeup so after I filmed this I literally grabbed my setting spray and went to town on my face but as you guys can see here I used so much powder but my face still does not look super caked up it looks natural and dewy but it's all powders so I'm excited to share the maternity pictures with you guys so you guys can see this makeup in action Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Mwah!